Okay, welcome back. Uh, Morris and Martin Racing. We're about to do what? Brakes? Yep, that's the idea. We failed miserably at the last job, so we thought, why not try another one? Yeah. Dan, explain a little bit why we chose the brake fluid we did and why we went to this specific brake pad, or at least I guess an upgraded brake pad from what was basically. So, let me, a little background. We've got, we upgraded on this car to four piston Brembos in the front, which is the same brake system, fr same front big brake system as on the GT500 of this body type. And we're still running the stock size of rear brakes um, outside of some slotted rotors that you can see right there. So we ran this car what, a couple weeks ago at Heartland Raceway in Topeka, Kansas. Um, noticed some significant brake reduction once we got the brakes heated up. Actually, car did okay at track night. But, oh, it was an autocross. Yeah, it was autocross two days later. Very little pedal pressure. Really had to hammer on the brakes to get any bite out of them. So I think it's a combination of we probably cooked the, the brake fluid and the pads are just not aggressive pads, especially not for autocross. Yeah. Um, they may have been uh, overheated, I guess. I, I don't really know much about brake fluid or brake pads. I know I bought HP Plus uh, Hawk HP Plus pads, and we put them on my Corvette, my base 2006 Corvette. Loved it. Not great for the street. Way too much noise, but great bite. They held up well on the track. I didn't push the car very hard, um, but I think they'll be really, really good for autocross because they have a really good bite. They don't take a lot of, they don't need to heat up, which in autocross, you don't get a lot of time on the track, so there's not a lot of time to build temperature in anything. Um, so that's good. And then we went with the, what did we get? Hawk HP 600. Yeah. Is it, is it a dot four? Yeah, yeah dot four. Dot four brake fluid. It's, uh, I'm not going to get on over my head. It's supposed to do a lot better long-term under heat. Um, I think it's supposed to not absorb as much water, hold up longer to higher temps, be better overall. So between these two upgrades, I think, well, I know we'll have a lot better performance at their next event. Um, I'm gonna start by sucking out the old juice. Yeah, so that the thing he's holding here is just a fancy tool that, um, I forget, what is that even called, I forget. Uh, I think it's called a, a brake bleeder kit. Yeah, that's right. It's just a, it's just a little cylinder with a hand pump. Uh, it creates a little bit of vacuum, pulls the vacuum through this canister. This goes down into the brake fluid reservoir, pulls out the old shit, excuse me, the old brake fluid. <laughs> Uh, and that's just, we're doing that so that we're not, when we go to uh, replace the pads and bleed these uh, lines, that we're not pulling all of that old brake fluid through that first. We're going to pull all the old shit out, excuse me, brake fluid out, <laughs> put in the new ones in the reservoir, and then start bleeding uh, corners until we get some clear fluid. And it's not going to be perfect, but we're not perfect, so that's how we're going to do it. I'm sure there's some a lot better ways to do this but oh, yeah. before we do it today. Cool. Let's get to it. Uh, okay, so we drained out all of the old brake fluid here uh, with that tool you saw us use, and then Dane's already refilled it with the uh, new dot four stuff. And then you'll see that we've already taken off all four tires. Uh, so, like I was saying, this is the caliper that we upgraded to a couple years ago. Um, this just four piston and then it's just got these larger slotted rotors and then we upgraded in the back as well to stay in the steel brake lines so um currently what we're doing is we're just going wheel by wheel and kind of breaking loose the calipers to get to the brake pads so we can swap those out um i think dan's currently working on the last one back here so um What's up you on now, my guy? Um, not knowing what wrench size that is for the bleeder <laughs> valve, even though it's the same on every damn caliber. So now Dan's pulling fluid out of the actual brake line and the caliper. Well, hopefully, that, yeah, there it comes. You can see, like, once he starts to suck on that, you can see it come out of the fluid and fill in that plastic reservoir in his left hand. Take forever. Yeah. Might have you pump. 
You have to sit in, the, they'll sit in the car and just do pump, 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 hold. Okay. Um, so what Dan means by that is that currently what he's doing with his hand is pressurizing the brake system, which I can do way easier just by getting inside the car and pushing the brake pedal. Which is effectively doing the exact same thing. So then I'm just gonna sit here and pump this brake pedal until it gets really stiff. And then he's gonna depressurize that valve and then it should pull fluid out of the system. Okay. So whenever I say K, he's releasing that valve and you can see my foot goes all the way down. And then he says K when he repressurizes and then I'll pump again until this gets difficult to pump. Usually four or five full pushes and then I'll say K, okay. K. Okay. And then you'll see my foot just moves just slightly, which means he released that pressure, which is hopefully pulling fluid out of the system. So um, we'll do this over and over again until hopefully pull all that old fluid out and then we'll replace it with the new dot four stuff. So kind of tedious, but okay. It's just part of the job. You can see our old pads. I mean, obviously the thickness is one thing. These are old. Um, they were wearing relatively even, I guess. The, what was the back side is less worn than the front side. Um, nothing looks bad, but they're power stop extremes. I don't know. I know they say extreme. I'm sure they're not that great. Yeah, so that's just a kit that was off of American Muscle. So yeah. something like they're more about you know d low dust and low low sound on the street. So we will take care of those. Nice. These on. <laughs> In the trash. And I don't know, I don't know what's the right technique here, but I'm going to just put shit on all this shit, all on everything, and hopefully some of it sticks and makes it good. Yeah, so why are we putting that on? Uh, just to prevent binding and, like, weird rattling and just make sure it runs in the, oh, make sure it runs in the, uh, God, this, I don't think this is good. <laughs> Dude. We're going to send it anyways. Yeah. way too much of it oh there it goes yeah it's fine yeah we just got there's no rhyme or reason to this shit oh so put some more just make sure that's all over everything and of course this doesn't want to stay when i don't hold it so i'm gonna try and not get this on the front of the brake pad all over me is fine in cool we'll put a little bit more where the brake pad ride or the brake caliper rides on these pads i'm sure someone online will tell me i'm an idiot but that's fine <laughs> i already know this yeah we're not here to prove it otherwise yep I know I don't want it on this surface, so as long as we don't do that. Oh, I got some more pants. Reason why I go into town pants. <laughs> uh, um, we'll need to compress this a bit. We got a tool for that. I also noticed your brake line is almost shot right there. It's like the outer covering is. Wow, and we replaced that a couple years ago. When we did, I think when we did all this, right? Yeah. So we'll need a new one of those relatively soon. And those aren't, I don't think those are braided. So we'll get some braided stainless ones for that. When he took this off, you'll see right there, there's a, looks like a spring or a plunger and that comes out, which makes it difficult to get that buck on. So he's gonna compress that, which will allow us to slide the top of the caliper back over the new pads. Cool. Oh. Well done. It's good. It's best that everyone see me struggle. Make sure. Here, before I do that, let me just drop my tools. <laughs> I'm just gonna put some of this on the boot. 
keep it from cracking. Uh -huh. Smart. Okay. Well, I don't but, know. Yeah. But who knows? I mean, this is, it can't really hurt, right? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what I called it earlier, but it was not a boot. So. Well, the, the that's the boot. This is the piston for the, the caliper. Travels inside, in and out of there, and that that just keeps dust and debris out of there. Right. And if it cracks, dust and debris gets in, and that's never good. Yeah, my lack of terminology is really showing my. Oh, I just don't. Yeah, I mean, we none of us know what we're doing here. We're just. Yeah. Oh, this is gonna be too hard for me. Okay. Yeah, that does not want to move. Cool. Okay, after some real struggling, we got the got depressed. Hopefully enough to slide on. One of us is depressed. <laughs> I don't think it's I don't think it's the caliper. I need to do some more. Okay. Okay. After a tough battle, we got one out of four calipers on <laughs> after bleeding this line. <laughs> Uh, so basically, I mean, that's all there is to like changing fluids and pads. So basically like disassemble a caliper, bleed that specific brake line, um, compress the, whatchamacallit, what'd you call that? Piston. Compress the piston, replace the pads, then put it all back together. So, um, we'll do all four and then make sure the system is full fluid and then we'll be good to go. Yeah. Cool. So as you can see, this guy is giving us way more trouble than we expected. So this boot is basically shot, but you'll see that there are like two grooves on that circle, one on the right and one on the left. Those grooves, in order to unscrew this, we have to use a special like Dr. Strange looking tool. So these, obviously each one of these sides is meant for a different thing. But right now we're using this ratchet and getting these two blocks to line up in those little indents. And oh, why is my phone being weird? I'm so sorry. Um, in theory, when we push and twist this, that boot should fully collapse, which should then allow us to get the two new pads inside of that gap once they're slotted against the rotor. So, but it is not one to go. So we're gonna keep working at it. Dan's already working on the front pads. So the strategy up here is different because of, like I said earlier, we upgraded these. So Dan right now is trying to wedge out the old pad to compress the pistons on these as well to get the new pads in but i'm having a very very hard time making that happen <laughs> okay dan got the two new brake pads in on the front caliper and this mechanism of holding them in is a little different from the back it's way better way better he says they were a little bit of a struggle to get them out and we can show you on the other side Kind of leaning and pressing and prying and kind of yeah. screwing up but the You can paint. see like this piece of metal here flexes over and then you push in these pins, which holds in the pads. So pretty nifty. 
Way better system than the original ones that come in the Mustang. And now we can bleed this and do the other side and be done. Okay. These brakes are, well, the rear brakes are giving us more trouble, so Dan keeps flying ahead of me. But you'll see on this front, driver's side left, he's already got the old pads out. Um, right there. And then he, uh, what are you squirting on that? Some good stuff. It's a Hawk grease pack. Oh, did it come with Your it? Your head grease pack. It came with some. Better than that orange uh, stuff we were using in the back. <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Too far. Hammer that pin in until you hear a different sound. You can slide this one in. Press that down. Get that to line up. Get it seated. You hear the sound change on that? Yeah. Solid. Nice work, dude. Way better than those shit rear brakes. Yeah, speaking of, I'm still like struggling on this brake that we were looking at earlier. It seems like this thing is freaking stuck. This is so old. I mean, it's 2005. So I've literally been putting like all my body weight against this. I'm sure you saw that in the time lapse, but. I don't know what to do. There's a tool they make that like O'Reilly's will have. It's just like, it's like it's almost 7.30 here at PM. So not really on the high on the to-do list, but um, hopefully we can just like main power the way out of it. So I'm gonna put the phone down and start cranking it out and let you guys know how it goes. Hey, we have a guest appearance. 54. Adam Binkaser. <laughs> so what are we doing here, gentlemen? <laughs> Tell me all know. about it. Obviously, we don't know. We've been here for way too long. <laughs> Do you know anything about brakes? Me? Yeah. They have pads and rotors, and they make your car stop. That's true. Educational. Um, we're so close on this, guys. We're I have busted all of my knuckles. Three fourths. Yeah. Guns are done. Waiting to bleed this one so that we can bleed the other one. And then after we do this, we just have to top off the fluid and we're like good to go, right? Embed them. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, embed yeah. them. <laughs> you need to bed them? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Adam, tell the tell the oh, channel yeah, what's that. what's bedding breaks. What is that? What is that? What do we what should we do? Is this a <laughs> is this a PG channel? No, I just said effing shit all oh, over the place. That's true. Okay. We're not we're not monetized yet. Well, when a man loves a break, <laughs> then the breaks. Yeah. Oh man, I think our viewership just halved. The one person, your <laughs> yeah. mom, just yeah. my <laughs> mom and my wife just logged off. And um, Adam, tell us about your car. What what is that? This is a 2018 Golf R APR Stage One. So what is APR? APR is uh, an aftermarket, a, uh, an aftermarket thing. We basically <laughs> we remap the, the engine so it gets better horsepower and torque. Yeah. And it you don't have to do any like anything physical to it. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So this car only has a four cylinder, yeah. tur turbo four cylinder. And it's significantly faster than the V8 Mustang we're working on in the garage. So it's pretty wild that they can do these like compact 
turbo fours, but pretty cool car. Uh, Dan, the one you've been seeing all day, drives that Golf. It's a GTI, not nearly as fast, but um, these things get up and go. Very popular autocross cars, if anyone watching is interested in autocrossing. But um, then we've got an SRT, which is uh, my daily amazing car. Not good for autocross. Um, we also have a 2019 Mustang S550. Um, this is the one my dad autocrosses. This car, um, mostly stock outside of headers and exhaust and tune and cold air intake. Um, and then under that, which in a later video we should probably get more into, but that is a 1986 Mercury Capri, which is kind of a, a Mercury clone of the Fastback Mustangs. So, uh, pretty cool car, needs a lot of work, but this uh, this current Mustang's been taking up all of our time, obviously. So, did you get it, Dan? No. No? Okay. Hey, Bob. Dude, he's the, the senior statesman of Martin Morris Racing, Morris Martin Racing, one of the two. Martin, Martin Morris. Dan, did you get it? I got it. You did it. Now we're going to bleed the final break, which is the same process we showed you earlier. Be so by doing that, he pumped too long? No, he... Uh, we filled this and then it had like leaned it over and then the oh. pump sucked some in. Yeah. Okay. I don't know why you do this. Oh, I'm fighting the way. No, you're not. You are good. <laughs> no, I've never been good. <laughs> are you ready? Ready. I have another word for overstatement too, but I won't say it. Okay. It's a family show. Okay. <laughs> Dan said it's not a family show. <laughs> yeah. He's been cussing up a storm. Three, go, 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 go. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's good. Just stay there. We're going to do the front. Oh, yeah. All right. So we just bled his front, uh, just the outer pistons of his front brake uh, caliper. And you can see that. Uh, I'll hold the light up to it. I mean, it's it's very bad. So. That tell was probably me, tell a lot me of, about it. Uh, well, there's a lot of dirt. Um, it's broken down. It's real thin. So not good. Uh, you'll see when we uh, dump this and start bleeding it again that the tube will be a lot clearer, more golden. So it's a good thing we did this. Okay. This is this little dance you like to do where we walk around the car two or three times looking for our hole. Yeah. Yeah, there should be some over there. It's ritualistic. Like so we're just, we're bleeding the brakes, so we're watching the reservoir to make sure we don't drain it. Um, looks like we might have drained it. So well done. But we have some more fluid somewhere. R.I.P. We're going to take a look at Dan's hands real quick after he's been working on these brakes. I think I didn't do it right. Yeah. Is the Flip it over. Yeah. Hold on. Get a good close up here. Flip it over. I don't know what the brown stuff is. <laughs> you were out of toilet paper. Hey guys, so we got it all finished up. <laughs> uh, all the brakes have been batted. They've been bladded. They been vetted. They've been vetted. No. Um, so we just got done feeding all the fluid through, flushing it out with that very tedious uh, thing me and Dana have been doing all night. So he's just going to top that off. Then... I won't show this, but um, now that we've done the brake job, it's important that 
um, for anyone out there that does hawk brake pads or really most brake pads nowadays need uh, what's called to be they need to be bedded. So what we're going to do now is we need to take the car out for specific. This is for specifically for hawk pads. We need to take the car out um, and go do probably six to ten stops from 35 miles an hour down to about five to 10 miles an hour. Um, and then we need to take the car up to about 40 to 45 miles an hour, about two, three times and come down almost to a complete stop. Now, when you're betting brakes, it's important that you never come to a full stop, nor do you want to park the brake or park the car or engage the parking brake right after you do this. Um, the brakes are going to be pretty hot. Granted, they're new pads, new surfaces. And if you park it right after you do that or come to a complete stop or engage the parking brake, you're going to risk um, warping the rotors or the pads and damaging the brake system. Just remember that if you ever bed your brakes, do those things, then drive around for a bit, let the brakes cool, um, and then you'll be you'll be safe to go ahead and park the car. Um, wow, that wraps up very poorly done. Not poorly done. A very what do you call that? Frustrating. Uh, frustrating brake job. It started all right. The, the gauges went in really well. Yeah. So uh, the video, uh, the video that we're gonna post was the gauges that uh, was also today. So we thought, heck, that went okay. We're gonna go to the brakes. But um, as you can tell, not all projects go as planned and uh, we don't claim to be experts. We're not experts. We're just a couple guys that know just enough to be dangerous and competitive and like race cars and going fast. So um, if you tuned in this entire time, thank you guys. This is just a new channel for, again, just a couple friends who uh, have a car and like driving it. So um, if you are doing autocross, enjoy autocross, track nights or anything like that, or tile, time tiles, uh, give us a like and subscribe and follow and you can We'll be posting more uh, frustrating projects in the future, I'm sure. So, thanks, guys.